All right, welcome back to Photoshop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create something with frames. It's gonna be very similar to this, but it's gonna be a little bit more advanced. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a bunch of different frames to be able to import images in. And what this is gonna be is just a template. It's not gonna actually have the images in it, but I will show you how to import the images. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to create a variety of different designs to make sort of a collage or a template to display multiple images. All right, so to do something like this, let's go ahead and clear this out and we will start over. That was five by seven, so I'm gonna come on up here in Photoshop to new file. And right up here, I've created a five by seven image. So I will select that and hit create. So it's five by seven, 300 pixels per inch. This is size for printing. You could make this any resolution that you would want. So we're gonna go ahead and keep the background color as white, cause it's really not gonna matter. We're gonna hit create. This is our main part of our template. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create some guides so we can make the layout really easy. To do this, we're gonna come on up here to view and drop down to the word guide. In guide, you're gonna slide over and there's something called new guide, but below it, we've got new guide layout. So we're gonna click new guide layout and already have this set up. I've got three columns, three columns. The cyan is just for this color. And what the cyan is, is back a long time ago, when you used to do layout on paper, you would lay out everything with these cyan lines and that's because the camera didn't pick them up. Now, just because the guides are on the image, if you were to print or output these, they will not be shown, but I'll show you. You can use command semicolon or control semicolon to hide and show your guides. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. These are just gonna be for layout at this point. All right, so the next step that she had was she had some borders here where we weren't just going to make a full image. It's going to have a little frame around it. So what we're going to use to do that is actually the line tool. And one thing I'd like to mention is I do use a custom toolbar. So if your toolbar doesn't look just like my toolbar, it's because it's custom, but all this stuff is available here. So the line is under the rectangle tool. So if you usually see the rectangle tool up there, you will click nested under it, you're gonna see the line tool, which is what we want. And you need to be sort of precise when you do this. And I'm gonna go up and put these crosshairs right on the middle of this. And I think that's there. I'm gonna click and drag. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go right down here to the bottom. Notice that it says 90 degrees. That means it's a perfectly straight level line. I'm gonna let go. And boom, just like that, we've created our first line. Then we're gonna come over here to our fill and I'm gonna change this to a gray. When you're doing this, you can make these any color and even if you do save it and decide later on that you want them to be a different color, it's really easy. You'll just come on over here and click on it and make it so that you can change it. So we're gonna change that fill to that color. The next thing is we're gonna decide what type of line. In this case, we want a solid line and how many pixels, all right? So notice we have a little slider. I'm manually going to enter this. We'll start off with 10 and hit tab to see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. You can make them larger or smaller, it's up to you. I don't know what size this person's gonna want, so we're just gonna make some basic random lines. So we'll click off this and boom, just like that. We've got the line, but it looks like I've got the stroke is the wrong color, so we'll come on over here, change this, okay. Both of those, the fill, the stroke are the same color. We've got a nice gray line. To do this one, we don't need to duplicate and do that whole process over again. We can just hit Command or Control J. We are going to duplicate that, as you can see. And I'm gonna hold Shift. So holding Shift is going to allow me to drag it horizontal without it accidentally going up or down. And we'll just come on over here and we'll just drag this line. And I'm gonna put it right there centered on that line. So we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna hit Command J and we're gonna move another one over here. So we have one on this far edge and Command J again. I could have done this in the beginning, but we're gonna hold the Shift key. We're gonna drag this one all the way over here to this side. 
All right, so those are our layout lines. I think I've got this one to the edge. Nope. So let me go ahead and kind of toggle that over. That looks good there. I think this one can come over a bit. All right, good. So I'm just using the nudge tool, which is an arrow key to make stuff go over. Command semicolon, control semicolon, brings up those guidelines again and we're good. Now we need to make the horizontal ones. So that's very easy. We'll just come back down to the line tool and we're gonna do the same thing over again. So we can start up here at the top, click, drag. And remember we wanna get this so it's perfect, zero degrees. That's exactly what we want. We've got this at 10 and I think we should be good to go. Yep, nice gray line. Hit command semicolon because I know I need to nudge this down a little bit. All right, that looks like it's set up correctly. Command semicolon, bring that back. And then I'm gonna hit command J, drag this down to the middle, command J. Drag the next one down. Notice I did not hold the shift key. This is what happens when you don't hold the shift keys, right? Hold shift, drag down works better. Command J, hold shift. Command J, one more time. Drag it down. We want that to be on the top. I'm gonna to hold that command semicolon, nudge this down till it's in the right spot and we're good. So we've got our layout template done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the very top one of these lines and go down to the last one, hold shift and click. That's selecting everything. I'm going to hit command or control G and group them. And so right here we have lines so we know what's going on. All right, so this is our lines layout. Now, the next step here, we need to decide where we're gonna place our images. In this case, I'm just gonna do an image here, an image here, an image here, an image here, and an image here. You could do this wherever you want them to be. You could put one here and a big one here, however you want. What's important is I'm gonna click on the background layer because I actually want my photos below the lines. If the images are above the lines, then they will go on top of the line, which is not what I want. I want them below it, so I'm gonna click on the background. I'm gonna come on over here to the frame tool, and it's this little thing that looks like a rectangle with an X in the center. So that's our frame tool. It looks like the quick key is K, and mine's probably pulled out from what it normally is. I don't know. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna bring up those layout lines and we're gonna, in that space, draw a frame. So I'm gonna come up here, try to perfectly lay this out. Click, drag, and go to where these all meet. And that's our first frame. So we can label this, I can put top, left. Do another one. Apply that, go back to frames, come on over here. Click and drag. My eyes aren't so good anymore. It's kind of hard for me to line this stuff up. That looks pretty good. Well, this one, top right, good. Up here, click on the frame. This time we're gonna do a bottom one. Just so I don't get interfere there, I'm just gonna start down here because I think it will make my life easier. Drag this frame up into that spot. Call this one center. That's good. Off, on, go down here to the bottom. You could zoom in when you're doing this if you need to be more precise. All right, label this one, bottom left. Pick a new one and the last frame. Come up here, drag that up. We will call this bottom 
right. All right, so those are our frames, just like we did with the group. I'm going to click the top one, shift click the bottom, hit Command G, and we'll call this frames. Now we've got our layout done. We're going to, at this point, save this file. So I can come up here and go to File, Save As, go to Computer. So I've created a folder already called Layout Video. I'm gonna go ahead and save this in as the template. So I will call this five by seven vertical template. And I'm gonna save this as a PSD. You wanna save this as a PSD. If you don't, if you save it as a JPEG, it's gonna flatten it and not work. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. All this information is going to be available. I'm gonna hit command semicolon to remove the semicolons. So right now I've got this grid layout with a bunch of X's. If you were to close this out and open it back up, it's still gonna look exactly like this. We're gonna open up our frames and now we can click on the first frame that we want to work on. So we got top left, so I click on top left. Right over here in our properties panel, you are going to notice that we have a bunch of different options. So we can find an image on Adobe Stock. We can do libraries, we can open our libraries. We can place from a local disk embedded or a place from a local disk linked. I'm going to do embedded so we can put the image inside. Linked actually wouldn't apply the image to this file. It keeps it in its own spot. Embed actually does move it. So it will make it a larger file size, but we're just gonna deal with that. So we'll click on this and I've got a series of images here. We'll just add this first one and that guy, boom, just like that, he's placed into the photo. So let's go to the next one. So we've got top right, place embedded. We will use one where someone's facing this way. So we'll click on this guy, boom, he's in there. Go to the next one. This is our center image. We're going to place embedded. We'll do a centered image and maybe we'll do this one. All right, come down here to bottom left. Change this to embedded. We want someone where they're looking that way. So we'll pick this one. And we've got our last one. Embedded. And we're gonna use this image. Boom, just like that. We have it all laid out. I can click up here to click off that. I can click on lines up here just to get rid of all those things. And just like that, we have this really cool layout that we've used as a template. So if we want to save this out, I'm going to hit Command Shift S for save as. We're going to do it as the Photoshop tile. This is not the template. I will just call this test.psd. Save that file. Once that file is done, I'll go ahead and close that. And if I want to open it back up and do a completely new one, I can just go ahead and open this up. Notice that now we're starting right back from square one. None of these files have any images in it. And I can go ahead and start clicking on the different images over here and adding those files into this template inside of Photoshop. And it's something that you can use over and over and over again. So what you can do is create a variety of different templates that are different from this that will allow you to do some really cool collage designs inside of the program. Well, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful and could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. And don't forget to subscribe.